Hello everybody, welcome back to Survival Defense Tactics, helping you take care of yourself so others won't have to. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe for YouTube. It just helps me know that you like the content, that's all. Alright, something I want to talk to you about today, blend in or stand out. Now this is under the assumption that something has happened and you're trying to either get home or bug out, whichever. A lot of what is going to go on depends upon how you're dressed. And let me be very specific. How you're dressed is not going to stop the situation, but it's going to determine the amount of attention you attract to yourself. So having said that, let's get started. I've got me a little list over here on the side that you can't see. Uh, in pretty much every poop at the fan scenario, you need to be aware of how you're dressed because what you wear may attract unwanted attention. Let me give you a good example. Uh, if you're wearing BDUs and you look military, you're going to attract all kinds of attention, one of two types. The, the little Billy badasses that want to try to take you on and see how tough they really are, uh, that's unwanted heat you don't need. And two, you're going to stand out as possibly a soldier could be misconstrued as National Guard, whatever, you may be considered public enemy number one, especially if martial law is implemented. If martial law is implemented and you're wearing BDUs and you look like a member of the National Guard, people automatically assume that you're there to take their weapons and you're not going to make any friends that day. So they're very rugged made, they're very durable, they have lots of pockets, they are, they have their own place in the prepper world, yes. But as far as like you bugging out to get home, you know, or get your get home bag out of the trunk of your car trying to get home, or maybe you're having to hike from one spot to another. I'm not convinced that military style BDUs is going to be your best bet. Maybe you have a plan that goes through a forest or whatever. It, anyways, point being is how you're dressed will determine the amount of attention that you attract to yourself. The uh, implement of a gray man is very important, I think. Gray man is basically just a guy with a backpack. Does not look military. He does not look law enforcement. Uh, just looks like a guy trying to get home. And you'll be a lot easier to ignore that way than if you stand out. All right. Uh, cons to the BDUs in an urban environment. Camo will attract a lot of attention. If you absolutely must wear BDUs, wear a neutral color like say tan you know tan khakis they, they you see people in khakis all the time and uh, khaki BDU cargo type pants those are still handy they don't quite have the military look to them uh, it'd be a lot easier for you to blend into your environment that way in a city uh, draw a hell of a lot less attention to yourself I would highly recommend you look into that it doesn't have to be khaki it could be sage green slate gray something I just, I wouldn't wear, I would not recommend wearing SWAT black or any type of camouflage because those will stand out. All right, pros and cons to street clothes. The pros, you will blend in a lot better, attract a lot less attention. Uh, back to the gray man thing, you'll look like every other Joe Blow on the street. Nothing about you stands out and says, hey, I need to pay attention to this guy. You know, he's got guns, he's got food, he's got first aid. You know, the more you look like, a normal Joe going down the road, the less likely you are to inherit trouble. Cons to it. The street clothes, you know, blue jeans, Wranglers, whatever, are usually a lot less rugged made, but the idea is for you to get home or to get to your bug out location. You're not there for a fashion show anyways. So in a crap hit the fan situation, your clothes are probably going to suffer anyways just you're you're better more equipped for the situation clothing should be at your bug out location or at your home whichever one you're doing bugging out or bugging in so combat boots they're next on the list combat boots are very rugged they stand out and they're very expensive you can trade those out for good lace-up work boots steel-toed work boots, or possibly a good, good pair of hiking boots. You'll definitely want some that are insulated because if crap hits the fan and it's cold weather and it's 10 miles from where you are to where you need to be, 
and keeping your feet warm, that's going to be paramount. Once your feet get cold and they start hurting, you're going to start slowing down. When you start slowing down, it's going to take you that much longer to get to where you're supposed to be. So, and with everything else that I preach, the most expensive pair of hiking boots you can find may not be the pair of boots you need. Yet again, don't go the absolute cheapest route. Research for yourself. You know, go to the go to Academy, go to Walmart, go wherever you're going. Try them on, walk them around just a little bit, see how they feel, and see if you think they're going to work. Uh, trial and error, as much as I hate to say this, because a lot of money can be wasted on trial and error. But trial and error is how you're going to find a lot of information out. Uh, that and trusted resources. You've got friends, family, whatever. Maybe they've worn those type of boots. No, them boots suck. Well, then, you know, don't waste any money on them. Whatever. All right. Backpack. If you have a military-style backpack, it is going to draw so much attention to you, it's not funny. Don't go out and buy a SpongeBob backpack either because it's not going to hold near enough crap, nor is it going to be rugged enough. And oddly enough, a grown man with a SpongeBob backpack is probably going to draw some unwanted attention too. Uh, not very favorable attention at that. Uh, you can get a OD green, you can get a khaki, you can get a solid black uh, prepper type backpack. Tons of pockets, tons of storage lightweight, very effective, very affordable. You can get these uh, Amazon Academy, all kinds of places you can actually wind up buying them. And like I said, they're, they're very rugged. Pick quality over quantity. And when you're building your bug out bag or your get home bag, don't put a bunch of useless junk in there that you don't need. The more junk you add, the more it weighs, the more it weighs, the slower you go. So the idea of having to abandon your car and walk home well you want to get home as quick as you can one you don't want to be exposed to the elements be it mother nature or the criminal elements you need to be somewhere safe somebody is counting on you to get there and to get there safely so speed is kind of paramount uh, not saying you have to run all the way home with a backpack on I'm just saying you don't need to weigh yourself down with a bunch of junk uh, you're your bug out bag and your get home bag, whichever one it is, make a list of what you need to put in it and then hone that down to, well, do I actually need 15 <coughs> different cigarette lighters? Do I need 47 different guns? Well, no. You need to get home. So chop it down, make it lightweight, make it usable, and make sure it's got gear in there just in case. Yeah, you're going to want a first aid kit of some sort, some snacks, some water, water purification. I don't know if however long it's going to take you to get home if you're going to need a backpack and a sleeping bag. Just build your pack and figure out what you absolutely can live without and then get rid of it. Get it out of the pack anyways. Make your pack as light as humanly possible. Hat. You are going to want a hat. Now, I would not recommend a camouflage military style hat. If you're going to wear a boonie hat, get something simple. Uh, Arctic Cool makes one you can wear around the house. You're supposed to be able to spray it down with water. I have one. Keeps your head cool in the summertime. Uh, it's still a boonie hat. still protects your face and your neck and all that good stuff. Provides shade. Plenty of ventilation to let some air in to cool your head off. And it doesn't look military at all. It just looks like something you might wear out in the garden or while you're mowing the yard. So you're still provided your protection, your shade, and you're not drawing more attention to yourself. If ball cap style is the way you want to do it, Get a good ball cap, uh, depending upon your environment and the weather conditions, uh, will depend upon the color. Here in Okie Dokie, in August, I'm not going to be wearing a black ball cap outside. Uh, no point in microwaving the old noodle upstairs. you got to keep your contents and your gray matter working. And a black hat will draw heat and it will cook your head. So something a little more neutral, a tan, maybe an OD green. Uh, I wouldn't wear white. White just sticks out against any environment. Even, I, I don't know, just I, I don't recommend white for any reason whatsoever. The whole purpose of this video is to keep you a step ahead of the crowd uh, you may wind up being in. Being able to get out and outthink others around you will be one of your greatest assets. And that, once again, the weight of your pack and what you're carrying. If your plan is to carry your get home bag 
and an M4 rifle in the trunk of your car. When crap hits the fan, and say it's an EMP pulse, whatever, your, your car goes down and now you're having to walk home. Once you put that backpack on, you are prepared to go home. Once you grab that rifle, you've made yourself a target. I'm not saying go unarmed. I'm saying I would go with a handgun, keep my M4 at home. If getting home meant getting to your family and then you've got bug out bags and y'all are going to hike out to a different location, then that's probably where the rifle would come in. First things first, you've got to get home. You've got to get to your family. If all of your family's not home, you've got to figure out a way to get everybody home. That's first and foremost. You've got to get everybody home. There's no point in planning on going to the, the bug out location if little Johnny is still sitting in third grade waiting on mom or dad to come get him. That's, you've got to get family members together. You've got to get them where they're supposed to be. And you've got to get them there as soon and as safely as humanly possible. Don't overload your pack. Don't overload your pockets. Don't leave important stuff behind. You know, good, good sharp knife or two. Uh, good handgun with spare mags. Yes, I carry two spare mags with me up everywhere I go. And people tell me that's excessive. No, it's not. Uh, I would much rather carry the weight of those two loaded extra mags than to carry an M4 rifle. I love my M4 rifle, but I'm not going to carry it with me everywhere I go. To get me home, I fully believe my pistol, my two spare mags, my tactical Gerber uh, principal knife that I carry, I, I believe those are the weapons that will get me home. If I'm wrong, I'll find out on the road, and guess what? You don't have to worry about watching any more of my videos. But pack light, pack fast, pack out, get out. Get to where you're supposed to be. Get your family there. Get everybody safe. Do a head count. Maybe you're not bugging out. Maybe you're like me. You're bugging in. For me, this place here, this is my last stand. I will not be run off this property. I will not be threatened. I will not be intimidated. And as gung-ho as it may sound, this is going to be where I make my last stand. If you come here looking for a fight, you're going to get one. And I don't mean that to sound mean. I will protect my family. I will protect my home. And the thought of me having to pick up and go somewhere else, I don't have somewhere else. I have plenty of friends that will tell me, yes, you, you come to my house. No, I'm not. I'm not coming to your house. Because in order for me to load up all of my preps onto a trailer, get the dogs, get everything else loaded up, and get to your house, the drive alone is anywhere from two to four hours in my car, not pulling a trailer. So I've got livestock here that, I mean, yeah, I'd have to leave behind. There's no way I could take all of them with me. So for me, the, the feasible, feasibleness of bugging out is not practical in any way. Bugging in is where it's going to be for me. You will know your own situation. Maybe you live in a high-rise apartment, and you've got to get out of that, and you've got a location off-site somewhere else. Great. Having a plan is already great. I'm just saying for me. For my household, we are bugging in, and we will stick it out until there's not a single last one of us left to do it. The, the benefits of being here are just greatly, greatly outweigh us trying to be on the road trying to get somewhere else. So not trying to sound like a tough guy, not trying to sound crazy. Uh, bugging in is the way we're going to have to do it. You will know your plan. If you don't have a plan, get one together. Uh, you'll never get anywhere without a plan. And then when you have that plan and it seems rock solid, for the love of God, come up with a backup plan for your backup plan. Always have a way out. If plan A doesn't work, immediately have a plan B already in place, ready to go, not something you have to think about. But plan B that's ready to go. And, oh, crap, plan B is not going to work. Well, I would have a plan C just in case. That's where the saying comes from, have a backup plan for your backup plan. The original plan is the one that makes it everything work on a peachy day. Plan B is your backup plan, and then plan C would be your backup plan for the backup plan. You don't have to overcomplicate this. For the love of God, don't oversimplify it. Be prepared. Be ready. Do everything you can to make sure that you stay one step ahead of the crowd, and if at all possible, two steps ahead of the problem. As always, thanks for watching. Stay safe. God bless.